Hi, I'm Katie, and this is episode 40 of Ornamentations. 40? Big number. How did we get here? It's also almost the end of January, and I'm not sure where January went either, so I guess I'm just confused. But today I have some great, great things to share with you. I have an exciting new start that I think you're going to be really thrilled to see. I have some fun finishes to share. I have some great haul that is leading to a very exciting new project. And then best of all, I have new frontiers in Sparkle, which I could not be more excited about. I feel like I just discovered the stitching Mount Everest or something, and I just want to shout about it because it's so fun. I'm enjoying myself hugely, and I hope you will enjoy seeing it as well. But let's get started today with the kit that's currently available. This debuted, 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 debuted on the last episode, Plum Street Samplers, this joyous season. Pre-orders are still available, but they are almost sold out. So as a reminder, pre-orders will not ship until May. The lead time is due to materials constraints. And again, pre-orders are capped, again, due to materials constraints. So once what I have listed sells out, that's going to be it on this kit, which is truly a gorgeous stitch. But there's a link in the description, so if you are interested in this joyous season, the full spiel was in the last episode. There's a link to the shop listing in my description, which also has the details. So go and check it out if you are interested because the window for this glorious stitch, I believe is probably closing pretty soon. So, oh, it really is beautiful. I think that this is a great, great pattern and I'm a big fan. And then just generally on the floss two kits, thank you all so much. They have been us. Uh, stunning, stunning success. Not this joy, not just this joyous season, but generally when I started, it was just kind of a, hey, maybe some people would like to stitch along with me. I really wasn't sure anyone would be interested at all. So where we are today is just amazing. So big thank you to all of you, whether you've bought a kit or you've just patiently sat and listened to me ramble about them without switching the channel to another floss tuber, which would have been justified. And the last news item I have is that the second lesson of the Elizabethan Valentine will be posted tomorrow, Wednesday, February 1st. Everything's up and ready for you and an email link will go out. I have been thrilled to hear that so many of you are enjoying the class and I've even seen some of your stitching, which all looks beautiful. If you're in the class and you haven't started stitching or cracked your kit, not a problem, entirely stitch at your own pace. As long as you're keeping up with your lesson downloads, you can start tomorrow, you can start next week, you can start next month, you can start next year. That's entirely up to you. Let's get to my own stitching though. So. Last time I told you that I was going to have a new start to put in my Katie project bag and that I was considering two different projects. I chose and started one and we'll start with that first and then we'll talk about what I didn't start and why I didn't start it, which is that I've got both linen and thread questions and I could use some help with that because, oh, I don't know what I think. That's relatively rare for me actually. <laughs> so what I did start was the Christmas in July floss tube kit. I need to get the conversion set so that I can get all the materials order and that is the recent Brenda Gervais release. Santa stops here because look at that house and I decided that I wanted to stitch this on Himalayan fog because of how the colors would pop. And this is what I've got, which is pretty substantial. So Santa, the snowman, the snow underneath the house are all there. And then I have got a chunk of the house done already, enough to set the colors pretty much. So oh, I love how this looks on the Himalayan fog. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you compare it to the more taupey linen of the model stitch, because that's totally consistent with the house, the white pops a little more, but I think 
a house, which to me is the big star of Santa Stops here, really just comes alive on this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous gray. And the red just looks luscious as well. You can see the white, it's just not necessarily as prominent as it might have been on another ground. But I think by the time you frame it with this beautiful, very vibrant border, and you get everything in there, it's going to look great. So I am going to stitch enough on Santa Stops here to establish all the thread colors for the conversion so I can order materials. And then I will temporarily put this aside and work on some more pressing stitches. But before that, this is where I are. This, this is where I are. Oh dear, I'm really, I'm having a day. <sighs> this is where the conversion stands right now as seen in my Lou and Sue thread folio. Did you see the new, well, what will be the upcoming release of that luscious red fabric that was on Susan's latest floss tube? Ooh, that was glorious. I mean, you can't beat having one actually named after you, so I will leave that folio to the rest of you, but ooh, a bit jealous there. So this is what I've got so far on the conversion. I realize you can't get a very good look at the threads while they're actually in the folio. However, since this stitch is a ways out, it is the Christmas and July floss suit kit. It won't be too much of a tease, but I think this is turning out beautifully. I can't wait to see the house all done. Now you love that? I absolutely love that. So. Santa stops here. This has been a fun stitch. I'm really enjoying the house, which is a bit unusual for me. My favorite things to stitch are really natural elements. Trees, vines, flowers, leaves, all that stuff. Houses, because of the block stitching, I usually find less fun. However, all the color movement in here with the stone and then those gray windows, that I have really been enjoying. And I think the colors are just, oh, lush, it's the stone colors on the beautiful gray ground. I'm really digging it. So that's Santa Stops here, which will be the Christmas in July floss soup kit available this summer. Again, ground fabric is like sea linen, 38 count Himalayan fog, which I am just loving. It's subtle, it has, Oh, something in it that makes colors shine. So, Brenda on their most recent floss too, that would be Brenda and the Cereal Starter. I mean, I feel like everybody knows who I mean when I say Brenda, but Brenda and the Cereal Starter was talking about how at Show and Share at the Attic Sampler Symposium, somebody had stitched hats Elizabeth Weston, which is the one with the Fabulous, fabulous temple down here. I love the colors on this. On a color, on a gray, a light gray color, which she said really made the pinks and the greens and the white come alive, which I can absolutely see. So if you've got Elizabeth the Weston, you might want to consider him laying fog for it or the 45 count equivalent hazy summit. I was watching their episode actually, scurried to stash, pulled out Elizabeth Weston, and seriously thought about starting this <laughs> on Himalayan Fog because those pinks would just look glorious on the gray. However, I have so many projects in mind that's not gonna be a thing. But what I do wanna start at some point and have not started because I could not make any decisions, which is what I'm hoping your help you will help me with is Modern Folk Embroidery Home Sweet Home. This is a smaller stitch, it's lovely. You know me and my letter thing, so I'm gonna leave out this bottom band with the alphabet, but I love the graceful trees. The border is just gorgeous. This, oh, again, has that kind of stone. Apparently I like those stone houses. So this, I think, would be absolutely lovely. I'd like to stitch this this year. And 
I was thinking that I would like to do this in a dark color on a light ground because of the Simple Harmony box. So as you know, I stitched mine in Goblin 779, which is a lovely, vibrant, bright red. It's gorgeous. I think the box turned out beautifully, but I will confess to you that I have had many a pang upon seeing some of the starts and finishes with the darker colors leading to a more high contrast look. So people who were using 671 or 5025, two of my alternate colorways, these have made for some stunning, stunning, stunning stitches. So since I'm not going to stitch the Simple Harmony box twice, I already did it once. I thought perhaps doing a really high contrast version of Home Sweet Home would assuage a little bit of my longing there. So my original thought was Russian Tea Cake, which is what I stitched Simple Harmony on because I love it. Colors look beautiful on it. Again, high contrast. That would be glorious. But I have been doing so much stitching on Cloister Cream with Katie Sparkle Prim. I thought, oh, I don't know, maybe that. That would still be high contrast. That would look really cool. Oh, I do, I do love that. And then now that I've started on Himalayan Fog, I'm all about that too. So first, I can't pick a ground linen. Choices. Clayster Cream, Himalayan Fog, Russian Tea Cake. What's your choice for Home sweet home. And then second issue is thread. So originally I thought keep it simple, 671, it would be a great black sampler November pick. I know it's not November, but I don't follow instructions. So I could do black sampler November in February or March, or I don't know, June, 671. High contrast, fabulous. I love this color of Goblins, it's great. But then I was digging around in my purple tray for something else and came across 575. Again, this is Goblin's. This is a very dark aubergine. Aubergine, how do you say that? I don't, don't even know. Isn't that stunning? So you get, again, very high contrast, but I love the subtlety of the gray and the purple undertones in this. Mmm. Mmm. And then sitting next to it in the tray because they're color friends was 3413, which is again a purple, but with a very high gray content in it. Now we're getting away from the very dark high contrast look that I wanted here. So this probably isn't a realistic contender. I just love looking at this. Isn't that beautiful? That is a stunning color. I have to do something with that soon because it should not just be sitting in my stash unloved. That's criminal. And then again, in the alternate colorways from Simple Harmony 5025, which is a dark green with a heavy blue content in it. Hmm, gorgeous. So, which is your pick? And let's just say, green, gray, or purple to keep this simple. And what's your linen pick? I could use some help because I would absolutely love to start Home Sweet Home. I just don't know what I think. And that is actually reasonably rare for me. So yeah, I could use some help. Please weigh in in the comments and tell me what you think. So then also in upcoming stitches, there is going to be a spring floss two kit. Some of you have asked about that. I have actually started the stitching. I'm working out the conversion now again, so I can get materials ordered and I'll be revealing the project and showing you my progress on the next floss two. I think that that's going to be beautiful. You may have a hint by where I was digging around in my trays for some colors. These aren't the colors that were just in the same tray. And then I have also worked on Britomart. We looked at the status of my Britomart casket on the last episode, if you haven't seen that. 
However, I will put off showing that until the next episode because it's a verifiable fact that I put in a lot of hours on the back panel of my casket. However, it doesn't really look like anything. So <laughs> I'm gonna hold that until next time in the hopes that I have something to show you that doesn't just look like a blob. I mean, that's a lot of hours. It just doesn't look like I did anything. How did that happen? Let's talk finishes. So first finish I have for you today doesn't actually belong to me. This belongs to my mom. So she was admiring my Bells of Christmas stitches all through the holidays and then after Christmas she asked me for thread and ribbon to stitch her own. She said that she wanted to use her own linen because quote unquote, she can't see on those tiny counts I like to work with. She ended up choosing a 36 count, which is in no way different from the 38 count that <laughs> I worked with myself and she admitted afterwards that she did actually wish she had stitched on cloister cream, which is what I used here. But this is my mom's finish of Bells of Christmas. This is a 36 count Zweigart with my thread conversion and then also the same ribbon I used. And this is her finish. So the linen's a little bit darker, which means the lettering doesn't pop quite as much, but the white really shows better than it did on mine. So same bill, two different grounds. Again, I think the lettering showing, it really makes the cloister cream the superior choice, but I do really appreciate how much the white pops on this. She did a beautiful job finishing. She used my template, so there's a little less negative space around the edge, but yeah. Go mom, and this has really gotten her on the silk train. I am so excited about this because I asked to borrow her bell so I could show you all on my floss tube, and then in return she asked me to do a conversion for her for her next stitch. And just as a disclaimer, I don't do conversions on demand, but I do for my mom because for obvious reasons she's a very special case. And so she showed me the chart, we were talking everything over, and then I went home, dug through my stash, and pulled some just ideas of colors she might like for it. She looked at the bag. One of the reasons I like doing this for my mom is that it's so easy. I know what she likes in terms of colors and what her preferences are. And she went, oh, Oh, I need all of these. Oh, I'm, I'm just gonna order all of these. And you know, do you have ideas on other things I should order? Because I should really start building a silk stash with lots of versatile colors. And it was just, oh, Oslana's music to my ears. I'm so excited. So we'll go out to Needle in a Haystack at some point and really get her kitted out with a working silk stash. But another convent, Con convent convert <laughs> to the wonderful world of Go Ones and 103s. I am thrilled. I did get a lot of questions from you guys on the daylight magnifier that I said she was using and had gotten for Christmas. She absolutely loves it. As you might notice, she's stitching more quickly than she has in the past. I forgot to get it from her but I will show it on the next episode. There's a link in the description to this episode. It's a daylight, I think it's called the Halo Go. It's the lap version, not the floor stand. And it really is wonderful. I do love Daylight's products. I have their travel light myself and I think it's just fabulous. Now, let's get to New Frontiers and Sparkle because this is exciting. Disclaimer, I don't think that this is going to show on camera. I have been trying to photograph this effect all week. I'm getting absolutely nowhere with it. So you're going to have to take some of this on a faith when I tell you this is remarkable because I don't think you're going to see any of this on video. But let's cut to the chase here. I had a hunch 
about a thread that I use in my Christmas wool followed applique stitching that it would be good for cross stitch, but I hadn't had a chance to try that out until now. So my thought was that I would take one of the motifs from, this is Modern Folk Embroideries through the Bitter Frost and Snow. You've seen me stitch some single motif ornaments before. These are some red ones with silk wrapped pearl edgings. These are again motifs from Through the Bitter Frost and Snow. And just as a note, there is a tutorial coming on silk wrap pearl used as an edging. I cannot promise you an ETA on that. Life has been pretty busy, but I haven't forgotten about that and it is coming. So these are some of my previous red ornaments. And then this is the latest edition, although stitched in a different thread. So this is on Russian tea cake, and it is the heart motif from right up here. I thought very suitable for Valentine's Day red. And this is my finish, which I wouldn't actually say that, that this is sparkly. It's got more of a glow to it, a shimmer. And see, now this is just showing dark. I will insert some photos. They don't capture this at all. It's driving me nuts because I feel like I just discovered the greatest thing since I spread and I can't accurately convey it to you. It's killing me. But the thread is Bijou. And Bijou so I'm waving this around so that you can get a little, I think it captures a little better on the spool than it does on the individual stitching. You'll have to believe me when I tell you that the stitching has the same kind of shimmering glow to it that the spool does. It's just the camera focuses on the black. So the structure of Bijou, Bijou is that it's got an exposed thread core around which is wrapped a colored metallic filament. Bijou is wonderful to cross stitch with because of that structure. It's not prone to splitting and shredding the way Accentuate is. So you can diminish that with Accentuate by marrying it with a spun silk thread like we've talked about. But Bijou, unlike Accentuate, can be used alone and it cross stitches really, really well. You can work with normal lengths. You don't need to treat it too carefully. It does wear a little bit in the eye of the needle, but that's about it. Otherwise, you've just got these beautiful, rich, shimmering jewel tones that make for absolutely stunning stitching. So the color here is Ruby which I thought was perfect for Valentine's Day. And then I have bought some crystals, color Scarlet. Oh, beautiful. And then I'm going to go to town and embellish this. I want to do a fancy hanger like I did with the Prairie Schooler I showed you in the last episode, but this time we'll be doing it in red. So, New Frontiers in Sparkle are cross stitching with Bijou, which is easy to use and gives wonderful results. It's long been one of my favorite uh, threads to accent my applique with because it comes in such a great range of colors. This is just one of my Bijou trays. They make oh, beautiful greens. So if you go back a few episodes, the Nutcracker tree that so many of you remarked on. It's understitched in Bijou Malachite, which is a beautiful, beautiful color. I'll be doing something with this too in terms of cross stitch, glorious. So oh, if you're looking to add a little something to your cross stitching, can't recommend this enough. Next time I will show you my FFO of this fully crystalled up. I think the combination of a ridiculous hanger and then this glorious thread is just going to be absolutely fabulous. I can't wait to share that with you. And oh, I just, I really enjoy 
finding new ways to add sparkle and fabulous elements to my stitching. So if you're sitting there going, wait, Kitty, you just promised us that you discovered the stitching Mount Everest and all you have to show for it is this. Yeah, well, to me, this is the stitching Mount Everest and it does look absolutely spectacular in person. I had this just sitting on my dresser. I would walk by it and just see the red glow luminous luminous glow and just sit there and oh, oh it's so beautiful i love it so much so yes you'll be seeing me doing more with bijou because oh, i love all the rich jewel tones it comes in and i have yet to stitch every single motif on through the bottom frost and snow which i think i kind of want to do so another thing that's coming I'm gonna clear some of this away and then I will be showing you my haul. Haul. So this is all leading to something very exciting. I've had an idea which I can't get started on until I've cleared out some of the big whips in front of me. No big starts until my bread and mar casket is finished. That doesn't mean I can't shop and gather materials my planned project. So this has been coming on ever since the Whitney Antiques exhibition on 17th century band samplers was announced and that there would be an accompanying catalog. I write the Needles Praise, which I own. We discussed this a couple episodes ago. It was being sold by the attic. I don't know if they still have any copies in stock after Sampler Symposium, but you can always get them, call and check. It features wonderful, wonderful band samplers from the 17th century in a range of techniques. So here you've got polychrome, full color, worked in silk. This is another spectacular example, one of my favorites. Detail here on the front from one of the stumpwork sections of one of the samplers. And then also features some spectacular white work cut and drawn work, reticella, just amazing, amazing things. Wonderful book. But I'm very drawn to a 17th century needlework. So Susan Stanley on our last floss too was talking about how her period is the 1850s, how she's really drawn to both fabrics, quilts, and samplers from that era. For me, my period would have to be the 17th century in needlework. I love casket stitching, stump work, the wonderful range of techniques that you see in a schoolgirl embroidery of that period, the fabulous materials, the vibrant colors, and while casket stitching is always my North Star, I do also find the band samplers very compelling. So I've been collecting some of the wonderful charts that are out there and that's going to be the little haul parade today. So we'll start with the heavyweight chart. This is Bethia or Bethia from Hands Across the Sea. So apparently somebody actually stitched this reversibly and it's almost finished and brought it to Sampler Symposium. I would have liked to have seen that because <laughs> having been through the chart in detail, that's some serious work. This centerfold. And what makes Bethia such a remarkable chart is that these are all mixed technique. They're not strictly cross stitch. And that's very difficult to chart, or at least I think it must be looking at the charts. What Nicola did that's brilliant is that across from every page of the chart, there's accompanying, I'm gonna be bad and just bend this, there's accompanying high resolution detail photos of every section referencing every page of the chart so that you can look and see what all the different notations mean. I am a very visual person, so I found that hugely helpful in deciphering the chart. The others are not for the faint of heart, but there's some pretty spectacular samplers, so I'm going to go for it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to start on this, but I'm trying to be restrained. So most of these are from Scarlet Letter. I do have another order from a sampler on the way. 
I'll show it to you when it gets here. So the first is AW1662. This one has some wonderful geometric motifs and I'm sorry in advance for the glare on these because as you know, a scarlet letter, those are actual photographs that are glued to the front of the chart. And then something that I have to do something with for the geekiest of reasons is EK1653. That's because of the title. So you may have heard my mom tell you we're big Sharks fans, San Jose Sharks, the hockey team. And our star player is Eric Carlson, the Swedish god of defense, also known as EK65. Mm -hmm. Personal connection here through hockey. Probably not what you were expecting to hear, but I never said I was normal. So this, which I will call the Eric Carlson sampler, again, has some wonderful floral motifs. I always really love those rose bands. Okay, that's a little better. Sorry, this is quite hard to show because of the glare. So, mm -hmm. what I'm calling the Eric Carlson sampler, that's a great one. One of my favorites. Joanna Warren, this is from the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. They're now identifying her as Joanna Warren Durr. And you can get high quality photos of the original, including the back showing the original colors. And this one has some spectacular, very dense floral bands, which I am all about. I love it. Pineapple band, beautiful carnations. Love Joanna Warrender. And then from a sampler, quite a famous one, Hannah Thornbrush. Fortunately, I don't have a single photo of this, so I'm just gonna show you the included pages. Again, spectacular, beautiful colors. I love green, pink, and blue as a combination, so this is right up my alley. I also love needle lace roses. And my personal favorite band from this. Mm -hmm. Spectacular. Thistles, roses, carnations, pansies, and needle lace. Yes, that's gonna be a thing in my life. This actually is almost identical to the band, one of the bands on Joanna Warrender. Beautiful. And then the bottom. So that's the spectacular Hannah Thurman brush charted by a sampler. And that's my little mini chart parade. I've got a nice big piece of Russian tea cake. And again, I cannot wait to get started. So I'll show you my next chart order when it comes in. And then hopefully before too long, we'll be picking this up again. And I'll be showing you what I plan to do with all of these. But that brings me to the end of this episode. That's about all I have for now. Next time, I will be showing you project progress on my whips. We'll see how far I got with Santa Stops here in that awesome house. I mean, do you just love the house or what? Before having to put this aside, I'll be showing you the spring floss tube kit project and my progress on it. And then hopefully some progress on my Brita Mart casket as well. Final reminder, I think we are at last call for pre-orders on this joyous season before I hit the cap. One last look at it. Elizabethan Valentine lesson goes live tomorrow, so make sure to keep up with your downloads if you're a student. And then next time, I hope to show you fully embellished all of this and yeah, all of the things that I just mentioned. I'm losing my place. So with that, I'll leave you until next time. I'll see you again in two weeks. And until then, happy stitching.